So there's two ways to increase your core body temperature. One is to light yourself on fire. The other one is to eat a few more spicy peppers. I want to give you in this video the three benefits of eating spicy foods all coming down because of something called capsaicin. What capsaicin is, is basically the bioactive component of a hot pepper that gives it that spicy taste. But there's a lot more to it than just a spicy taste. First one, capsaicin is a huge, huge driver of reducing pain. Simply put, it has to do with something that's called substance P. And I've actually done pretty detailed videos on substance P in the past. But essentially what substance P is, is a pain signaling mechanism from the site to your brain. Now what capsaicin does, like for example, if you were to make it into a paste and rub it on your skin, is it slows down the production of substance P, which means that temporarily you are not having the pain signaling from that particular area in which it was rubbed on to your brain. Therefore, you can have a pretty significant reduction in pain. There was one study in particular by a group called the Cochrane Collaboration, and what they found was that when you actually took capsaicin and made it into a paste, like a plaster, and applied it to patients that are having lower back pain, there is a pretty distinct reduction in perceived pain and actual inflammation. What they looked at was a group of men that were 52 years of age on average, and they applied a certain amount of capsaicin by way of pace. They monitored them for about three weeks and determined exactly what the pain threshold was and exactly what the level of pain was compared to a control group. Well, at the end of the study, it was found that the control group had significantly higher pain levels than those that took the capsaicin pace. So right then and there, just one of dozens of studies that appoint capsaicin to pain relief. The next reason why capsaicin and hot peppers are going to be very, very good when it comes to your health is simply the fact of thermogenesis. Okay, we're talking about the act of increasing your body's core temperature. This can have a huge effect on reducing fat, have a huge effect on your metabolism in general. There's one study that I want to reference in general, and that's a study that took 9 milligrams of capsaicin administered to people over a period of 12 weeks. Well, compared to a control group, compared to a control placebo group, those that took the capsaicin had a reduction of belly fat by 1 centimeter, but also lost on average 0.4 kilograms of weight. That's a fairly significant decrease in body mass just by adding cayenne into the mix. So that's just a simple way of looking at how effective cayenne can be when it comes to burning fat. But then we also have to look at the thermogenic effect after consuming food. When you consume food that contains cayenne, you actually burn fat at about 30 to 35% more effectiveness for about 45 minutes after consumption. So although it's not a long extended effect, it's still a pretty quick effect that can help you metabolize the food you just consumed. Now lastly, I want to talk about inflammation in general. Okay, inflammation can be a lot of different things. We can have chronic inflammation inside our bodies that's affecting us with pain. We can have inflammation that's affecting our brain. We can have inflammation that's affecting our nerves. That's like MS. But what a lot of people don't realize is that inflammation and obesity go hand in hand. In fact, obesity is inflammation at its very core. You see, you're having adipocytes. You're having that adipose tissue that's being affected by inflammation, causing the fat cells to grow even more. So if we can find a way to control inflammation, we may be able to find a way to control obesity a little bit more. There was one study that was done on what are called KK mice, which are a specific kind of test mice, that was found that they actually reduced inflammation within the adipose tissue. Now there's a number of studies that looked at different levels of capsaicin on different kinds of mice, but this particular study found a pretty dramatic increase in the adipose tissue itself as far as inflammation is concerned. So again, linking it back to the fact that inflammation and fat cells go hand in hand. So if we combine all three of those things together, the fact that we can reduce pain, the fact that we can aid in thermogenesis, and the fact that we can potentially reduce inflammation, that's all the reason in the world to start adding more spice to your foods. So simply put, add that jalapeno, add those serranos, add those canines, and if you're daring enough, go for the ghost peppers because you're going to get the most amount of capsaicin you could possibly get. As always, keep it locked in here on these videos, and I will see you in the next one.